Welcome to another Retro Shelf video. As you know by now, I like some seriously geeky books, and I think you'll find it doesn't come much geekier than this. It's called Arcade Game Typography by Adoshi Omagari, published by Thames and Hudson, and this was purchased through the crowdfunding site Volume and Read Only Memory Books. Read Only Memory also did a special edition with a different binding, and so. Video game designers of the 70s, 80s and 90s faced colour and re resolution limitations that stimulated incredible creativity. With letters having to exist in an 8x8 square grid, artists found ways to create expressive and elegant character sets within a tiny canvas. Featuring pixel type faces selected from the first decades of arcade video games, arcade game typography presents a previously undocumented outsider typography movement, accompanied by insightful commentary from author Toshi Omagari and countless screenshots of the type in use. So, forward by Kinori Moroka, head of Japanese magazine, design magazine Idea. So, forward preface, type for amusement, the rules, 8 by 8 monospaced, description of the type of font, the typeface is split into various sorts, and then additional essays. So, the Atari font, anatomy of the Atari font, MICR, peculiar characters, all characters in a game, the end of a format and index of games. So there's the forward. The font is the game we play in typography. A great way to finish that. Hope it inspires you to make new typefaces of your own and reignite the almost lost art of pixel typography. Having edited fonts myself, I do know there's something quite satisfying about getting the balance and right. So the rules on what has been chosen, they're not included. Sonic, it's not in the arcade. The Mortal Kombat font is proportional rather than monospaced. These are larger than 8x8 and it's not a Latin font. And this is a vector scan font from Starhawk. Um, okay, so 8x8 monospace. Imagine a little grid of 8 dots by 8 dots. And that's how we get these. So, an example of what became known as the Atari font from Quiz Show, Depth Charge, and variations on that base font, as you can see, with different weights. Cheeky Mouse and Rock and Rope. Again, we can see screenshots there of the games. Son of Phoenix using that style of font. Monster Bash here, we can see some colour being introduced. Marble Madness. Bongo. And a classic here from Space Harrier, which has got the shading running through it. There's Legend and Hot Chase. I do like that game. Game Ground, another Sega title, from Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, which fits into that 8x8. So you larger look at individual letters here. Virtual Fighter, another one with the colour shading. Virtual Racing, Namco Classics, harking back to earlier. And you can see again examples of the typeface in action. So look at the Quiz Show font a bit closer. Songs bold, some interesting looking fonts here on that spread. Food fight with the yellow colour, then echoed in Junior Pac Man. And you start to see the colour shading and shadows being added to emphasise Fantasy Zone. Another classic Sega typeface there. You see that one echoed a lot. Solomon's Key, great game there. And the Afterburner form, Sega's Tetris, Sky Robo, Parodius, and again a very distinctive font with the way it uses the colour, sort of on this shadow underneath. But very minimal. Cotton, so I'm going to flick forward a bit faster now. Anatomy of the Atari font, and looking at the same font with a bit of interpretation. And then with some colour adding. Songs Light, so very thin typefaces. 
that Seraph's on Seraph as it means. Thunder Dragon, interesting one there. I like this, this outline style of font is very good. I like, like that sort of font. Out Foxies. Puzzle Bobble. And then Seraph fonts. The sort of Seraph font is quite common. See it in a lot of games. The Quizmaster one there. Double Axle. Pang, another favourite game of mine. Again, we've got the colour shading there. Colour gradients. Clax, which has some interesting characters in there. And you can see each one then sort of analyzes particular standout features or quirks of each font. Power Instinct Legends and Heaven's Gate. So MICR, Magnetic Ink Character Recognition. So it's designed to be easy for a machine to read. And it's that classic sort of Futura computer font. Again, that gets interpreted in, interpreted in many different ways, from outline to colour gradient to shadow, to give each one its own distinctive look. Battle Gaudia. And then slanted fonts, an italic style font. The cliffhanger Edward Randy. Close up some couple of letters there. Again, we've got shadows introduced for dynamite ducks to give it more depth. characters very often you'll find the font has extra characters perhaps to do a copyright symbol or to have in the high score entry and a page for those there calligraphy and lettering so again trying to make it look more like someone's written on the screen or taking a bit more care the classic shinobi ninja style font there purely rila which is again a very distinctive font there and moving forward, horizontal stress. So you can see how these have a slightly different weight to them. Thicker bars, giving a different look horizontally. And then looking at all the characters in game, including some of the special characters. Stencils. So here, pieces cut out of a font. Uh, action Hollywood there with the lovely orange colours. Don Doco Don, one of my favourite games. Military style font there from NATO Defence. You often see the stencil in there and also in the Wild West style font there. You see the pieces cut out. And then more decorative, unusual examples. Different use of colour there. Darwin 4078. Shoot them up. Lost Tomb. Altered Beast. This is the font. And you can see here some of these are you know, some are shaded vertically and some are shaded horizontally, which gives an interesting effect. Nasta Arc Area. Hydra there. And Primal Rage. So you can see how the typography, the font in a game has a different feel in the end of a format because modern games do not need to use that you no longer have to deal with monospaced and frequently go for a proportional font and talking about how that was done the index of the games and the acknowledgements and thanks so Toshi Onagari is a typeface designer at Monotype UK he studied typography and typeface design at Mushashino Art University in Tokyo graduating in 2008 this is his first book, and it is a fascinating book. If you're into gaming and fonts, and it's still available online, I'll leave a link in the descriptions. So, thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and of course, I'll see you in the next video.